As the film opens, we fly over a vast expanse of parched fields of a small Australian town. We zoom into a house with its doors open. Inside is an infant crying. Walls are splattered and bodies lie on the floor. We cut to a big city where Aaron Falk, a federal investigator, is listening to a message telling him to come back home for a funeral. On his desk, a newspaper headline shows a picture of his childhood friend, Luke, with his wife and two children, the caption showing something terrible had happened with his childhood friend and family. Arriving at the church, three caskets are displayed as the minister reads the eulogy. He had not returned since his teenage years. After the service, he greets Gretchen, another longtime friend who once dated Luke. They go to the wake, where the parents of Luke, Barb, and Jerry Hadler thank all who come and ask forgiveness for their son who loved his family. An attendee, Grant, scoffs at this remark and upsets the parents as Gretchen scolds him. While driving, Aaron revisits a memory from 20 years earlier of a day of frolic and fun swimming in a river. It's with Luke, Gretchen, and his girl, Ellie. He pulls over and walks to that now dry riverbed and recalls the moment they found Ellie's body while he spied from the trees above. He visits Luke's parents who are caring for the surviving baby. They ask him to investigate the tragedy. Their theory being that Luke may have borrowed money due to the crop failures from the drought. They surmise loan sharks killed the family when it could not be repaid. They ask Aaron to look into the accounts, but he is reluctant to do so. Jerry follows him out to his car and states he always knew that he and Luke lied about their alibi the day Ellie died. He questions if Luke is guilty of this crime now. Perhaps he was capable of hurting Ellie long ago. Aaron has a flashback of the river and Luke dunking Ellie underwater, and he too ponders the same thing. He decides to stay on and look into the books. Later, while getting a room at the inn, Grant, Ellie's cousin, tells him he has no place here and to get out of town. His uncle, Ellie's senile father, mistakes Aaron for his father and states, Aaron is not welcome in town because a whole lot of people remember what your son did to my daughter. Unable to sleep, Aaron leaves his room for a walk when two townspeople bang upon his door accusing him of murder while Aaron hides in the hall. The next day, he meets Greg Racco, the town's police sergeant. As they walk around Luke's house, Racco shows Aaron where he found the bodies. There are many inconsistencies with how the crime took place. Aaron visits the school where Gretchen is a teacher. While interviewing the principal, we learn Karen, Luke's wife, was a bookkeeper there. The principal, Scott Whitlam, states that she made a few accounting errors and was upset with her husband but never said why. He stops by Gretchen's classroom and they reminisce about their time in elementary school. His mind wanders back to Ellie and when she showed him her favorite place, a rock tower, and after Aaron found her bracelet in a crack, they shared their first kiss. Later, Aaron visits the police station and Racco tells him that the bullet casings found at the scene don't match the ammunition Luke used. The two then drive to the place where Luke's body was found. Before the murders, Luke spent the afternoon with Jamie, shooting rabbits, so they go to interrogate him. Jamie says Luke seemed fine and left at 4.15, minutes before the shootings. Gretchen meets him at a restaurant and they talk about the crime. Aaron asks her if Luke was ever violent and what she thinks really happened to Ellie. We learn Gretchen and Luke dated each other off and on ever since. She thinks Ellie died because she was depressed and made a stupid decision, not to mention that her mother left and she hated her father. After Gretchen and Aaron ascend the stairs to his room, Grant appears and confronts the two of them, again telling Aaron to leave town. The two gaze up at the sky and embrace, but Gretchen decides to leave rather than pursue any romance. The next morning, Aaron visits Barb Hadler, who is cleaning out her son's home. She begins crying over a picture her grandson Billy made of his father. Aaron tells her the financial books are fine and asks what her plans are for the farm now. She finds library books and Aaron offers to return them for her. Aaron again recalls a night Luke and their girlfriends were sitting by a fire while Ellie was singing to them. As a joke, Luke fakes falling down a cliff and they all come running. Aaron gets angry at his antics and the two fight. Ellie has had it with Luke's reckless behavior and questions why everyone puts up with it. He tells her she is just a bore. 
Frustrated, she storms off as Aaron follows. Upon returning the books to the library, Aaron finds a news article in between the pages about him with a receipt on which Karen wrote, Grant? Racco and Aaron interrogate Grant as to why Karen would write his name. They inform him that he is a suspect and his alibi is weak. They both ask Grant if he was planning on buying Luke's farm, which would be a motive. They check the CCTV cameras around town looking for clues, but Karen and her children are last seen leaving the school alone. Aaron flashes back to high school. He sees Luke reaching out to Ellie about their squabble the night before. A jealous Gretchen looks on. Aaron asks her to walk home with him. She says she can't and gives him a prolonged kiss, then says goodbye. Aaron quickly writes a note telling her to meet him later at the river, then gives it to her. Luke stares, having witnessed the whole thing. When he and Racco leave the station, they see a slaughtered calf on Aaron's car and dozens of posters all over town calling Aaron a killer. And angry Aaron goes to confront Grant, but Whitlam stops him and invites him home to calm him down. Again, a flashback to him waiting for Ellie at the river as someone is watching from the woods. Once at Whitlam's house, they sit for a beer, and Sandra, the principal's wife, plays a voice message Karen left, canceling their son's playdate together just an hour before the murder. The principal confides to Aaron that while alone, he was robbed at knife point, with the thieves stealing all their jewelry and savings, and that is why they moved here. Aaron remembers returning home after being stood up by Ellie and learning from his father a body was just found in the river. He runs back and discovers she is dead. Aaron remembers the night Ellie died and how Luke was worried Aaron would be the prime suspect because of the note found on her body. Luke says he will be his alibi and they must say that they were together shooting rabbits in the hours surrounding Ellie's death. Later, while questioned by the police, he sticks to that story and he has for the last 20 years. Back at the inn, Grant and Jamie are brawling. Aaron and Whitlam break it up. Aaron takes Jamie to the doctor for stitches. He confronts the doctor about Jamie being seen leaving his office the day of the murder, indicating he was not with Luke as Jamie previously declared. The doctor admits that the two are lovers and Jamie lied about the alibi to keep that secret. We flash back to the days following Ellie's death and Aaron finds a slaughtered calf on their porch. The next day before the funeral, they left town and never came back. Aaron now drives to the cemetery and views the recent graves of the Hadler family. At Ellie's grave, her father approaches, stating that even his own father believed Aaron was involved in her death. Suspecting he's holding something back, Aaron asks him how he knows so much about his whereabouts on that day. He remembers his father sincerely asking if he had anything to do with that girl's death. He said no. His father then asks if he really was with Luke and he lies and says yes. Later, Aaron visits Gretchen and they look at old photos. Aaron notices a photo of Luke holding her newborn son. He confronts her, asking if Luke is the father of her child, and she says it is none of his business. Then Aaron warns her, lying about her relationship with Luke is the worst thing she's done to his family. She tells him to leave. When he returns to the inn, he finds Sandra afraid, looking for Whitlam, but then Whitlam appears and they go home. The innkeeper says Whitlam is there every night gambling. He has a restless night and starts to connect things. At dawn, he sneaks into Gretchen's house and steals the school's financial documents. Sifting through, he finds a grant for $70,000 that was given to the school yet unaccounted for. He visits Sergeant Racco and tells him Grant is not the person but the money. He puts together the gambling problem of Whitlam, Karen discovering it, then confronting him and the murder of the whole family to cover Whitlam's theft. His car was seen at the school, but he always rides his bike. They ask the grant sponsors who say the money is missing, who in turn they call Whitlam at school for further inquiry. Things are closing in on him as Whitlam sees the police truck approaching, so he takes off into the woods with a plan. Racco and Aaron search for him at the school and discover the gun ammunition used for the murders in the shed he just left. Now they are sure it was him. They find Whitlam behind a tree with gasoline pouring all over and a lighter in hand. They try to talk him down, saying he may start a forest fire killing the school children. He confesses that loan sharks came after him, threatening his daughter, so he stole the money and killed the Hadlers when Karen found out. 
As he then sets the fire, we see scenes of what really happened that day Whitlam planned and executed the murder of the Hadler family. Racco and Aaron both jump on him to stop the fire from spreading, but all begin to burn. Days later at the hospital, we learn that they managed to put out the fire and all three live, though Whitlam was burned beyond recognition. Luke's parents say the whole town considers him a hero and states his father would be proud of him. He and Gretchen make up and she admits she was always in love with Luke. They spent the day together that Ellie died. Aaron goes to put a flower on the rock tower, Ellie's favorite place. In the crack, he discovers her backpack left there since the day she died. Inside is her diary. She wrote about running away because her father was treating her very badly. He threatened to kill her if she ever escaped, but she tried anyway. We see her father remembering the day of and how he went after her, caught her, and killed her. Grant always knew. The movie ends with Aaron walking down the dry riverbed with the evidence heading toward town. What do you think about this movie? This was kind of a sad one if you ask me. Post your comments below. If you want to watch more on Movie Shortens, click on our next videos then playlist on the screen. Thanks for watching.